more good news for Tesla Model 3, something I haven't said in a while, right? So, but we, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about Mercedes-Benz news. Uh, and Nikola 1 is also in the news, not in such a positive way, but nevertheless in the comment of the day once again uh, about Reno Zoe. I'm actually kind of like exploring that topic. So uh, let's talk about it all right now. Take it Okay, so yesterday we talked about uh, Model 3 and how uh, they've registered a bunch of uh, VINs, uh, about 5,000 of them, and that was definitely good news just because of the history of what uh, what that means. And today, usually do it, they do it once a week or so, but today they registered another bunch. And this time is almost 3,000 and really makes people wonder if, you know, the ramp up is going to be significant in the next month. Now, I've been talking about that Grumman Engineering uh, assembly line that they've been bringing from Germany to here and wondering what kind of effect uh, impact is actually going to uh, make on the production. And some people say, hey, they will easily double it. We don't know if they put it together already or they just about to. It was supposed to be here uh, in the middle of last month. Um, but you know this is uh, this is definitely good news for for the Model Three, and if Tesla can meet that five thousand um, unit per week goal that they've had, hey, this is this is just going to be back on track. The stock has been doing pretty good as well. That's something also pretty important. Uh, and by the way, um, if this is your first time watching this video, please uh, join our community by clicking that subscribe button so you don't miss anything moving forward. Now we're talking about Model 3 and there's another news that came kind of came out today. Um, I really wasn't even going to use that picture so bad, but apparently uh, here in California, Northern California, um, a few Model 3s were spotted in a racetrack and uh, one of them um, looks like, and again, pictures did really kind of useless to be honest with you, but um, it looked like it was a performance uh, air suspension and uh, a dual motor car. So you know, so we we know that they're coming out with a dual motor and they know they kind of uh, tease us about other packages that might be coming out. But to have three in one, I think this is the kind of one of the first times anybody kind of sees it in a while. And um, that's definitely, you know, more good news because it's uh, it's something that means that not only they're ramping up the production, they're getting closer and closer to, you know, dual motor is very important. People who live in north, northern part of the United States and Canada are really, really waiting for those. A lot of people that don't want to fulfill their, you know, move forward with their reservations because they want a dual motor uh, for those cold areas. Um, they, you know, air suspension, something that a lot of people wanted as well. And hey, if we can get performance package, that would be great. There's even a word that there will be a ludicrous package um, added on top of that. So I'm, uh, I'm actually quite excited about it because um, that means we are getting there. So yeah, more good news for Tesla. <laughs> All right, guys, before we move on to another one, I just wanted to remind you that uh, this video and this channel is sponsored by Evanex, the aftermarket accessories for Tesla. You can grab your own discount code in the description of this video that they've created specifically for this community. All right, Nikola 1. Uh, is in uh, the news again. I've never been a big fan. I gotta tell you, I mean, I know they're kind of part of this movement, but kind of not. You know, they have this uh, Nikola One truck that's hydrogen fuel cell. Um, you know, not that excited about it. Uh, it's, the production is not gonna start until I think 2022. They still don't have a factory. It's just a lot of things that I've kind of not behind this company for now, at least, right? And so today they did something kind of odd. Well, two things. One is they decided to give refunds to all of their reservation holders and said, you know, now you can reserve these uh, basically for free. Well, there are a few problems with that. By the way, they're claiming they have now up to 8 billion in reservations, right? So if every single person who, that fulfills their, uh, that has a reservation gets the, this actual truck, uh, they will... Uh, sell 8 billion worth of trucks. Um, now, they will never be able to make this claim when the reservations are free because I can go in, I guess, and make a reservation and have no intention of buying it. Um, now, they also took a kind of a shot at Tesla saying, well, you know, unlike other companies who take reservations and then use this money for operations, we're not going to do that anymore. Um, there wasn't much explanation behind that. I personally don't see anything wrong with that because... Um, the service uh, that a company sold to you when they take in your reservation, um, even though that is refundable, 
um, it's, you know, that you're being held in line and you can, you know, get a, this, this truck or this car before everybody else who's behind you in line, right? So that's kind of a service they're providing. And the fact that it's refundable, listen, I, I go to a safe way to get some milk and technically I can bring it back for a refund, but that doesn't mean that they should hold on to my money and not use it for their operations because it's a refundable money. So I think it's fair game. Let me know what you think in the comment section, of course. But the fact that once again, another electric car company I'm not really sure if you even call them that because again, I mean, they are electric, but you know, hydrogen fuel cells, man, I don't know where, I don't know. But, so, uh, you know, just taking another swipe at, the, at, at Tesla is just bad idea. These guys don't even have a factory, don't even have, you know, a real production plants. I would just keep going and concentrate on, on creating this truck and bringing it to production. So not such good news for, uh, for this company. Uh, as far as the PR is concerned, yes, they got, I mean, we are talking about them. So, okay, maybe I shouldn't say bad PR, but definitely uh, unnecessary uh, swipe of the competitor that's obviously, you know, right now is very much ahead. So it, it, it yeah. well, anyway, so let's move on. Before that, by the way, if you don't mind giving this video a thumbs up, I really appreciate it. Back to Tesla, though, uh, Elon tweeted once again, he just replied to what it seems like a random post. Um, you know, people are just saying that, you know, they still haven't gotten updates for their latest uh, navigation uh, and map update. I'm actually one of them. Neither one of my cars got that update. And it's a little frustrating, right? Everybody else is writing, you know, about it and <laughs> posting videos. And I'm like, hey, where's mine, right? I would love to talk about that. Uh, and, you know, I have to say that from everything that I've seen, the updates are really not that amazing. I mean, they're okay. I feel like they just kind of caught up with Model 3 uh, has in, in its navigation system, but we'll see. Uh, so now uh, Elon is saying that you can request that feature. Basically, I guess you can log in and say, hey, I want the, whatever the latest update right now and you will get it. Now, I'm not really sure why he would do that because I understand there's a little bit of a science behind it. And yes, we don't really know like sometimes I can get an update like literally the next day after announcement. And sometimes, as you know, like it's been a week now and I haven't got mine. Um, I thought the purpose of it is not to overwhelm their own network, right? And so they kind of rolling it out. Uh, and also if there is a problem with the first or second batch, they can kind of stop and 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 roll it back or you know issue a quick batch so not the entire fleet gets gets affected by something that might have gone wrong. Um, in this case, if people will be able to just kind of download it at will, you know, they might end up with a bad batch or, or a little bug that ended up at more hands that they, you know, would want to. Um, so I'm not really quite sure if this is a great idea or not, but nevertheless, it's it, it's coming out. The only So I guess there was a hack how people try to get the latest one is if you drive, and again, I, this is just kind of a rumor, if you drive to the service center, Tesla service center, connect to their Wi-Fi, you know, in your car, uh, you would get the latest update. And I'm assuming that they did it for their own uh, technicians when they update the software when uh, a car is in a service. But uh, it's very interesting. I haven't tried it. Maybe I'll try it some someday. But if you guys have, definitely let me know in the comment section um, as well. This is something that I definitely would like to know if it's true or not, because that, that would be kind of a cool trick. Uh, by the way, um, as you know, I'm still not streaming live, but I am going to do that probably starting on Monday. I've decided I'm going to do it for my Patreon people who actually configure, uh, configure, contribute, <laughs> you know where my mind is, uh, contribute to uh, to the show. Uh, I will still uh, stick with, with this um, relatively modest uh, donations, but uh, the hug will turn into a pics and blogs. The uh, the th the three in the, the the three dollar one will turn into all access pictures and videos, but then uh, the live streaming would be for the five dollar um, uh, contributors, and I guess the you know. Um, You'll, you'll be able to watch it live and you'll be able to comment and see your comments on the screen. I think that's a pretty cool uh, sort of uh, uh, a value that I can provide and add to what I already uh, have been giving to my Patreons and so much. Thank you so much, guys, for uh, donating. But nevertheless, if you're not interested, that's fine. I will immediately repost this on YouTube so you will get to see every show every day. Uh, probably by noon for sure, you'll be able to do it. So thank you so much for that, guys. Let me move on to another story about Mercedes-Benz. Now, why am I showing a gas car right now on the screen? Well, this is a Mercedes S-Class, kind of their top of the line uh, car. Um, they now kind of announcing, not official announcement, but I guess it just came out in uh, an interview with one of the Mercedes-Benz executives that 
you know, their EQ series uh, they've been coming up, which is kind of their electrified fleet, will have a, 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 um, a premium sedan, just like Model S, uh, I mean Model S, uh, S-Class, and uh, that uh, they will most likely call it EQS. Uh, but yeah, no concept, no images, nothing, but it looks like they are keep adding the cars to that queue, uh, no pun, pun intended really, and you know, moving forward with this. So not a big news, but nevertheless, I think this is good. Like once they add this car, to uh, their EQ lineup, I feel like it's relatively complete. There's an SUV there, there's a sedan there, now there's a luxury sedan. So I feel like they're kind of really, really moving forward with this for real. So that's definitely good news. Uh, by the way, tomorrow, uh, in my interview segment, I am excited to have Robert Bollinger, the CEO of Bollinger uh, Motors. Uh, very excited. We're going to talk about uh, uh, his off-road uh, electric uh, uh, truck, um, SUV, really. I don't even know what they're calling it. I think, uh, well, we'll find out. Uh, and also, he's going to talk about electric cars in general. This truck is pretty impressive, about 200 mile range. They just updated that. Um, so a lot of people are, are excited about this company. So I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to him. Uh, the weekend after that, I'm going to talk to Rich, uh, Rich Rebuild. I think a lot of you have kind of mixed feelings about it. I'm excited. I really like this guy. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And then on the 21st, I'll be taking the Cali trip with my Tesla Adventure and Zach and Jesse on 28th. So pretty cool lineup uh, coming up. And of course, in the next month, I'm also looking forward to some other other cool people coming onto my show and talking about their products and, and their vision and, and just uh, just a, a lot of exciting topics. By the way, if you have questions for um, Robert, go ahead and submit them in the comment section um, so I can ask them for you guys. All right, uh, comment of the day real quick. Today I only have one. Can you believe that? Uh, <laughs> this one is about uh, um, uh, 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 Reno Zoe. I know we've been kind of having conversation uh, for a while about it, but uh, I, I guess you guys, this is part of the show where you're educating me, so I'm excited about this. Uh, uh, Trevor, this time around, actually there were quite a few other people, I think Nigel and other people who kind of mentioned this, but... Um, he said, I went to buy a new Zoe for my daughter and found that the lease cost on a per mile basis was equivalent to the fuel cost of an ICE car, hence wiping out any potential savings even before paying for the electricity. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of a problem. Remember the story we did about the Porsche uh, announcing that their um, fast charging network is going to charge and is going to charge something close to gas prices? Well, I guess Renault's been doing it. Again, I'm kind of behind on this, but you guys living there in the real world where the, the you know, I, we don't have Zoe here at all. But yeah, this is kind of outrageous, I have to say. And then he's right, Trevor's right, that, you know, on top of that, if you have to pay for electricity, and depending on your rates, you might actually end up with a more expensive uh, alternative uh, than gas. And, I, I, you know, one of the biggest points and selling points, I think, is that, hey, you don't have to spend money, as much money on gas. Your gas bill is could be cut in half and or a third. In my case, it's like quarter. Um, so I really that kind of really sucks. Yeah, you know, I'm I, I was I, I'm so for the concept of um, leased batteries, but at the same time, I'm obviously obviously this is not the best example. I think uh, I'm looking forward to Neo. Uh, the Chinese company doing that, but I'm hoping that the pricing is going to be lower. People are not going to be as locked in into the contracts and it's going to be more about um, having a choice and not having to worry about the quality of the battery rather than a company trying to lock you down into this deal that is, is hard to go through and then hard to sell the car and a resale value goes down. So thank you guys for, for your feedback. I really appreciate it. Okay, once again, guys, um, tomorrow... Um, Robert Bollinger, looking forward to it. So uh, tune in and on Monday, I will try to get back to uh, live streaming. So once again, thank you so much for joining me. I will see you guys tomorrow and remember to stay charged.